2022. And as we're having economy recoveries left, right, and center, the one big question is where are the youth in this conversation? Where are the youths represented in these budgets? Where are the youths represented in all these initiatives that are running here and there to recover this economy? Well, the Chamber of Young Entrepreneurs Uganda has confirmed the Entrepreneurship Summit 2022 that is on today and it's themed fostering recovery and building entrepreneurial resiliency and the much sought after summit will bring together up to 1,500 young people and especially women even in business and this event is seeking to provide a platform to the young people one to discuss business solutions and also to ensure that they can buckle up for the economic shocks that they are facing right now now here to have these conversations with me is Edwin Musime who's the president young entrepreneurs Uganda good morning to you Edwin good morning how are you very good it's a pleasure to have you it's and an we can't honor. wait to hear more about this summit and uh, young people's Uganda now we also get to look at Natasha Natasha Katondwachi, who's the CEO of WAPE. Natasha, Madam CEO, good morning. <laughs> good morning. Thank You're you well. for having me. Yes, I'm Okay. Very well, the good news is that Natasha is a young person. We do have Edwin here still in the young people's age bracket. Uh, so they are in <laughs> good, you know, good places to tell us more about uh, young people. So Edwin, first tell us about Young Entrepreneurs Uganda. Well, the chamber predominantly was set up with a vision to power Uganda by empowering Ugandan em entrepreneurs. And the idea was, of course, against the backdrop of numerous reports about Uganda being, being the most entrepreneurial country. But also, uh, we know the fact that Uganda is um, the second most youthful country next to Niger. So we've got uh, lots of young people, lots of young energetic people with great potential. And for me, the potential doesn't even just come away from what we are able to do. But when you look at 400,000 uh, graduates coming out every year to only to find 9,000 jobs, that for me is potential. So it is those young people, it is the women in business that we're looking at empowering, but also importantly, uh, having uh, players like uh, Natasha, <coughs> where we're getting together uh, different young entrepreneurs who are already kick-starting the success process to be able to mentor or play as role models to those that are hoping to start. So we are literally just creating an ecosystem that creates a chain for sustainability in entrepreneurship in Uganda. Okay. Well, Natasha is a success story here, and she has uh, been CEO of WAPE for how long? For two years Tell now. us about WAPE. What was the solution you were trying to provide, and what is it like right now? Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you very much for having me. My name is Natasha Katondrati. I'm a co-founder and uh, the team head at WAPI. Uh, WAPI is a digital talent marketplace that helps startups and companies find African talent within less than seven days. So what we basically do is help uh, freelancers within the digital space to find earning opportunities within and beyond Africa. Uh, WAPI was started with a background of uh, helping people in the digital space to find access to earning opportunities because right now we have very many upskilling programs in Uganda that are teaching people digital skills like programming, design, uh, digital sales and marketing. However, what happens after the upskilling is what solution is not available at the moment. And there are also already very high rates of unemployment. So what we're trying to do is create a solution to, to solve the soaring rates of unemployment starting with a digital space, but within Africa. Uh, WAPI was started in 2020. It's one of those uh, COVID startups. I was going to say, <laughs> no. shut up. <laughs> COVID <laughs> time, and you yeah. were starting yeah. a business. Yeah, okay. so that's what we are basically doing. We've uh, helped a number of startups in Uganda, mostly, and uh, some other parts of Africa to find uh, access to talent in Africa, and uh, people are getting work. And what are the numbers of the young people that have gone through WAPI to get employment? We have placed more than 100 people in more than uh, 50 startups in Uganda and a few in Nigeria and Kenya. And we're also currently doing pilots in Europe and uh, US startups because that's the target. Because in the next 30 years, uh, a quarter of the world's labor force is going to come from one continent and that continent is going to be Africa. So what we are doing at WAPI is making sure that we grow our talent pool big and strong enough so that 
part of the 14 million jobs from the U.S. that are being outsourced right now, it's the African talent that is giving that value to those businesses. Okay, they say go pro, well she says go Africa. Now mm. speaking of young people, as you mentioned earlier, this country, about 70% of its uh, population is a youth, a youth age bracket. Now regarding the Entrepreneurship Summit 2022, what is it about? What are you intending to objectively get out of this summit, Edwin? Well, the idea is that, uh, of course, we know that the summit this year uh, that kicks off uh, this morning actually at uh, 11 to 12, we shall be having a Twitter space discussion on, at CYE Uganda on Twitter. You want to follow that. And this will be women in business. And then, of course, uh, at 12 to 1, where we shall have a uh, discussion on business sustainability. That's on the Twitter spaces. 2 p.m., our gates are open at the Kampala Serena Hotel. Uh, we come with the summit ad against the backdrop of uh, recovery from the pandemic and now we have seemingly an economic pandemic that we are dealing with. I keep seeing statuses of people highlighting what the fuel price is. It, it looks like we have hourly updates now. Yeah, <laughs> that's very true. News, hourly <laughs> updates of that. Yeah. Fuel game. So it is against that backdrop. And also to understand that uh, we've moved, we are greatly moving more from the industrial revolution. And now it's uh, more about the, uh, the, the, sorry, did I miss something here? Uh, from the industrial revolution and now we've moved more into the info it's more driven by information mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, looking at the young people uh, that's where the potential is so this year the theme is said as uh, fostering economic recovery because we've been through the pandemic now the economic tough times then also building resilience because uh, when you recover, you should not recover you to go back to, to, and, to where yeah. you've been. Mm -hmm. So this is where, uh, even away from the summit, we're going to continue the conversations on uh, uh, financial discipline, uh, both as an individual and then as a business. Because I always say that uh, the life, the lifeblood of uh, businesses can be categorized in many aspects, but finances are one of the important things. But again, if you don't sort out the financial thing or factor with yourself as an individual, then you're going to have problems. So. Looking at the fourth industry revolution in a nutshell, what we're looking at doing is bringing the young people of this country and women in business closer to the global discussion of the age in which we are. And uh, so importantly, to also not just keep admiring what the world is doing, what Rwanda is doing, what Hong Kong is doing, the pride of Uganda, that Uganda is a country that we can be proud of and can produce the next world game changes mm -hmm. and i mean when you look at stories like wape i mean the resilience and boldness to start up something during covid and there's lots of booming businesses that actually came out of the tough times of covid and that's mm -hmm. the resilience the boldness the courage the tenacity that we're trying to give to these young entrepreneurs to be able to move the economy forward Okay, all right. Uh, you do have your startup, Wape, and I want to find out from you exactly how you're helping young people to be able to bloom with resilience. Yeah. So basically at Wapi, because we are growing a talent pool, we also want to make sure that as the talent pool is there, waiting to find access to these opportunities, that not just seated there, but we're adding to them some kind of value to help them understand how to brand themselves, how to constantly improve the digital skills that they have, how to build profiles that are standing for themselves and are able to take them places. So how we're helping them to bloom is basically we usually run programs, for example, bi-weekly Twitter spaces where we uh, invite prominent people in the, different, in the different digital skill areas to talk to them, uh, inspire them on how their journeys have been, how they found their work, how they use their work to build their portfolios and get to the next level and basically be able to survive in the digital space and remain relevant because the world is changing. Like he said, we are moving now from industrial revolution to an information driven um, you know, world, state of the world. So, Probably well, one thing to add to what you're saying. Yeah. Our message also, um, um, I, I usually don't want to contradict the president really of this country, but our message is very simple and clear. When we're talking about the dreams of our young people, the potential, arts, sciences, it doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, on record, We'll have, we have technically more than 75% of business entrepreneurs who are arts students. Mm. So arts actually matter. Employing the so, so Exactly. Mm. So a message to every young person is that your dream matters because it's not, we cannot judge our 
destinies, economic prosperity and social prosperity based on the particular degree we got. It ought to be on the talents and the gifts that these young people have. And to the young people out there, the problem were discouraged by the fact that, oh, arts don't matter. No, arts do matter. And I'm not going to even sit here and have a debate over which is better and which is lower. No, they do matter. Even to the science student, if that's your passion and all that, let's do this. Yeah, okay. Natasha, you're dealing with young people and uh, you're a young person. What challenges have you encountered dealing with these young uh, potential entrepreneurs or potential uh, <coughs> CEOs, potential brains that will change Africa? I think one of the biggest challenges amongst us, I, we, because usually when you're in the startup scene, you get to interact with very many other startups. And also because for us, our target uh, or where we want to be is uh, having connecting these people to opportunities in the US and Europe startups. We get to interact a lot with people there. Now you'll find there in the US or Europe uh, a 17 year old entrepreneur and they're telling you things they've done. They've run a startup, they have done uh, raising grounds, they have lots of capital. And then when you come to Uganda, you're looking at a 21 year old and they're like, no me, I'm sitting at home because I can't find work. And so the problem is, I don't know if it's just low self-esteem or the kind of system we have uh, grown up in whereby we, it is fixed in our minds that I'm supposed to go through a certain process, right? I am supposed to go to high school and study very many things that I'm not going to use and then go to the university and up before the university, I can't be able to do anything and then after the government is supposed to give me a job. So the biggest challenge for me, I think, is the mindset which I may not blame a lot on them because I mean that is how we have grown and that is what we know. So what the job that we have, uh, people that have the platforms like Edwin or people like myself that have gotten to experience you know, startup life, we have a big role to play in mindset shifting what? and making uh, young people understand that, hey, use, like your dreams are valid, like he said, uh, sit down, bring that idea to life because there are very many of them that have ideas, but they are just seated on them. Bring it to life, you know, persist, get into spaces like these ones, learn, and everything is possible. Edwin, uh, we do have you talked about the, uh, you know, COVID-19 pandemic, then there's of the economic pandemic, but yeah. there's, there's also the mindset pandemic yeah. that <laughs> an African, Ugandan young person faces. Yeah. There are challenges here. Yeah. Mm. They have everything available to them to tap into but their challenge and limitation is yeah. right here so how do we move forward in helping the young person today actually stop doing this and start doing this two things let me first uh, take off from the tail end of where what you had asked the biggest problem i found with startups and i i happened to have the trap when i was starting up uh, years ago uh, the money value versus the uh, value uh, money money versus money versus the value right so you see uh, co-founder wape they started and all that and they've grown to a certain extent and all that and they probably have built a business a certain way so there's startups and young people who just want it to happen magically yeah. you have christians that just want the miracles microwave miracles it, let, I, i'm praying that it just no, no finished no, no, no. works i always tell them <laughs> i always tell people success yeah. is not a miracle mm. it is a process yeah Success is a process. Now, let's go back to the perspective of uh, uh, the mindset. Yes, we've had discussions on education reforms that are required in the country. The question is, what if in the next 10, 20 years, the education reforms don't come? Because the reason she's mentioning the young person in, in the United States of America or uh, uh, Silicon Valley or Hong Kong or Beijing, China, it's the foundation mm. that we have. Now, we grew up in a, a society where mama says there's no money, daddy says there's no money that goes into the young mind there's no money okay mm -hmm. then money doesn't grow on trees that's the mindset okay. so what young people and people uh, by the way as i say young people there's also all the people that are watching right now they're still mm -hmm. struggling with startups yeah. it's very important for us to recognize and respect so what i would say is that it's each of us our individual re responsibility mm -hmm. to turn around our mindset i always talk about social capital intell intellectual capital this you don't have to necessarily have acquired in school Every week I have to buy two books. My library knows that. Every week I have to buy two books. Every week I need to interact with somebody better than me or somebody I'm at at the same level to just engage and discuss. Because how does the mindset change? What you expose yourself to, what you read, the conversations you have, and there you can be able to change the mindset. All right, and so they are going to be exposing young people's mindset with the Entrepreneurship Summit 2020.